When you look at the human body, it's kind of like a donut, right? But our donut hole is, <laughs> oh my God, what am I talking about? What is the perfect routine for your skin, depending on the weather, where you live? If you're oily, dry, how do you figure out if you're oily or dry? Your skin conditions, how are you supposed to build the perfect skincare routine? Well, there is so much information out there and it can be overwhelming. You look into something because you notice you have spots or a little acne blemish, and next thing you know, you're spending hundreds of dollars on products that don't work for your skin, or you don't know how to use them and layer them properly. Let's cut out all the crap and let's have a little conversation with your acne big sister, medical esthetician, and person who genuinely wants you to love and understand your skin. And in order to build the perfect beginner's routine that really only takes two, maybe three steps, we're gonna have to start by understanding our skin because it actually doesn't matter where in the world you live, what the weather is, even if you're dry or oily, because all skin has the same basic components, the same basic anatomy. In epidermis, these top little skin cells that we see that slough off really quickly, the dermis, the thick part of the skin, and then even deeper down, things like the hypodermis, muscle, etc. And while your body and your beauty is extraordinarily unique, all of our skin has this same basic structure. And unless you have a major skin condition, something like rosacea or eczema or psoriasis, the anatomy of the skin is pretty much the same. And if you do have any of those medical conditions, get them diagnosed by a doctor or dermatologist first. Make sure you get those checked out professionally. But when it comes to building your routine at home, let's break it down so that we can keep it simple. I had a really hard time explaining this concept to a lot of the people who come in to see me. And when they were struggling with their skin, trying to understand where do I put a toner and a serum and do I need this face mask? I decided let's break it down into three basic steps and fill in the blanks. This is the cleanse consistency complete diagram. And this is how I recommend everyone approach their skincare. First, you have your cleansers, then you have your consistency treatment steps, and then you have your completion steps that seal the deal. And there are steps in between, for example, a double cleanse if you wear makeup or an exfoliant in the cleansing step if you have a little bit of extra buildup on the skin. But if you're an absolute beginner, you just wanna focus on getting a good product that is going to cleanse the skin. And you don't need to worry about all of the extra stuff. When it comes to consistency, like toners and treatments as well, we're talking about the viscosity of a product so you know how to layer them. But if you are an absolute beginner, you don't even have to worry about retinoids or acids or hydrators. You don't even need this step if you don't want it. But if you do have a skin concern, such as being a little too dry or a little too oily, or you feel like you just want more brightness in your skin or to deal with a breakout, that is where this comes into play. And then lastly, we have the complete step. Of course, no routine is done without a sunscreen or maybe a moisturizer if you need it. And we're gonna talk about all of that. But in order to understand how to perfect a beginner's routine, we do need to understand what's going on in the skin. This is a beautiful diagram of your skin and it can look a little bit intimidating, like, oh, what is this sausage looking thing doing here? But when we break it down, it's actually quite beautiful, the way our biology has created and protected us. Remember that the skin is the body's largest organ. Some people would argue that it's blood, but that's a conversation for another day. For all intents and purposes, the skin is the body's largest organ and it's meant to protect us from everything that we encounter on the outside. When you look at the human body, it's kind of like a donut, right? We have the outside, our skin, and then our digestional tract is kind of like an outside as well, right? It interfaces with food. We're kind of like a donut, just a very large extended human donut when you really think about it. But our donut hole is, <laughs> oh my God, what am I talking about? Our internal donut hole is meant to digest and process food, but that's also why our stomach and intestines have bacteria, a microbiome, so that they can digest our food and absorb it, but protect us from anything nasty or pathogenic that happens to be in the food that we eat. Now, our skin is the outside of that. It protects us from the outside world, from dirt and bacteria, etc. And we do have our own skin microbiome that helps us out. But when we get a cut or a fissure, that's when, of course, we have an open wound and things can get in. Now, if the skin's purpose is to keep stuff out, it can be very hard to get products and things to penetrate in, which is why skincare can be so complex and confusing. But if you look really closely at your skin anywhere on your body, other than the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet, and like your oral mucosa, you have these little hairs, these little vellus hairs sticking out. And every single one of them is attached to this sausage looking thing, which is a pore. This is where your skin produces oil. This is where acne bacteria lives. And this is an intrinsic part to your skin. And when you apply skincare, we're normally coating the epidermis, the top layers of the skin. Epi means top, dermis means skin. So those top layers. And then we can also get some products to penetrate deep into these pores if we do want to clean them out or control oil or help with dryness. Now the dermis is the thick part down here. That's when you hear of when you think of collagen, anti-aging, skin cancer, and sun damage. And the epidermis is actually very, very thin, but it does consist of multiple layers, specifically five. And this is where new skin cells are created and they get pushed through these layers and slough off the top. And when they slough off, that's what coats your furniture with dust. If you didn't know, now you know. So when it comes to building the perfect skincare routine, what are we supposed to do? Well, we want to enhance what our skin does naturally. 
We want to allow our skin to have a good barrier to protect us. And then we want to make sure that things such as the collagen and the elastin down here are supported and doing well. Here's some normal skin histology, basically skin under a microscope. But as you can see, if someone has eczema or psoriasis, the entire structure of the skin changes. There's an issue here. And that's when you see a doctor or a dermatologist to get this taken care of. Over-the-counter skincare is not gonna deal with this. There are things that can help, but you need to get that done professionally. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about this, I've left some other links to helpful videos in the description, as well as some medical papers if you do want to read those. And I've also listed some of the best products for absolute beginners that work when you're starting your routine. If you click the little open button in the description, it is all there for you. But if you are someone over here who uh, is a human who has skin, let's build you a super simple two or three step routine that you can use every morning for an absolute beginner. Or if you know someone who's trying to get into a routine, they've asked you for help because you're a skin intellectual, this is where we start. As you can see, we start with the cleanse portion. You basically want to find a really good cleanser. Now there are many different types of cleansers out there. For example, you can get oil cleansers, you can get detoxifying cleansers, you can get fancy cleansers with antioxidants, and you can get stripping cleansers with exfoliating beads. But the best thing you can do is look for a basic cleanser that's going to support cleaning the top of the skin without over stripping. We don't have to get fancy with ingredients, but a lot of K-beauty options are really good, such as this one from April Skin or this one from Mediture. The science behind this is that we just want a cleanser that's going to balance our skin's pH, cleaning the skin without overly stripping it. You don't need to worry about all those fancy things. Just look for a really basic and inexpensive cleanser. And that's the other thing. You want all of your beginner products to be really inexpensive. And the reason why is because as you're starting out building a routine, you're not going to know what your skin likes. You're going to get to learn your skin over time. Don't spend 70, 80, $100 on a cleanser or on a product until you really get used to the basics of a routine and then you can add things on in the future. Now, some people speak about double cleansing, and even if you look in the Cleanse Consistency Complete diagram, you can see that there's an exfoliation step or there is a face masking step. Both of those are kind of in the cleansing vein because you are using these products when you are cleansing your skin. You know, you put them on, you wash them off, but in a very basic beginner's routine, don't do this. You don't need these things. And when you're trying to build a routine, the more simple it is, the easier it is to stick to. Of course, if you are struggling with a lot of grease on your face or a little bit of dryness, like your skin kind of feels tight when you get out of the shower, you can look for products that are labeled dry or oily. This is a great one from Community 66. It's also really basic and inexpensive, but that is also a little bit advanced. And if you don't know what your skin type is, you don't know if it's dry or oily, don't even worry about that right now. Just look for the basics and then see how your skin reacts over time. You can turn and learn your products and start getting familiar with those ingredients. Don't be overwhelmed by them, but just kind of look at them and see if there's anything that pops up regularly that you can get familiar with. And another really helpful tip is that if you literally search Cassandra Bankson and then insert ingredient here, or uh, insert product name here. We've probably done a review on it. I've been posting videos on the interwebs for 12 years, actually 14, because I had a YouTube channel before that I deleted. It was called Cassandra Cream Sheen. It was about makeup. Um, it was so bad. It's a good thing that it's off the internet. I had like 36 subscribers. But if you do search that, it's a really helpful hack. And then we also have blog posts about ingredients on our website, as well as other people's skin stories, so that, that can be a resource for you. But remember, when it comes to the cleansing step, we're just trying to keep it really simple and remove any dirt or any gunk off the top layer of the skin without stripping it or damaging it. Then we get into the consistency step. This is kind of the treatment step, and this is where most people have a lot of problems. When we're talking about consistency, we're talking about the viscosity of a product. Is it a really lightweight liquid or is it something that's kind of thick and uh, chunky? In general, people who are layering their different serums want to go from thinnest to thickest. So starting with like a hydrating toner or essence and then following up with other serums. But as a beginner, let's not f*** any of that. Again, you really don't even need this step. If you want to skip it, you absolutely can. But even though it's the most confusing part, it is not the most important part. Now, if you are trying to build a beginner skincare routine for something that you see that you don't like or that's going wrong, for example, you want more brightness or you do have a little bit of acne, that's where you would use this product. If it's an acne treatment serum, put it in in this step. If it is a vitamin C brightening serum, put it in here. And if you don't know about l ascorbic acid or vitamin C or what salicylic acid and BHAs are, again, use that little tip where you search Cassandra Banks and this ingredient or start learning a little bit online. And over time, you'll start to get acquainted with those terms. You'll start to see them when you turn and learn your products. And you'll remember, oh, BHA helps with acne or AHA helps with with pigmentation. And honestly, even watching reaction videos are a really fun way to learn this. We look at celebrities and we analyze, scrutinize, and learn from their routines. And when we're talking about what a celebrity is using, it doesn't mean it's going to be right for you. Do not buy the things that other people are putting on their face unless they have similar skin to you and you know that, which uh, 
Spoiler alert, 99.999% of the time, there's no way to know that. But when people do reaction videos, it's a really great way to learn from someone else's routine and to get familiar with the ingredients inside of these products. So remember, you can skip this step, or if you really want a cheat sheet, use this. Vitamin C is for brightening, salicylic acid for acne, alpha arbutin for pigmentation, green tea for stressed out skin, and ceramides for dryness support. The way that this step works in the skin is that it actually goes on the skin and it soaks in. So normally we're trying to get it down into this pore or into these top layers of the skin or maybe even into the dermis if the molecules are tiny enough. This is basically the step that's going to do the most work. If you've got a problem to solve or something you want to improve, this is the step to do it in. But remember, just because this step is the most confusing doesn't mean that it's the most important. The most important step is the complete step because that is where we talk about sunscreens and moisturizers. If you've been here for any amount of time, you know that SPF is your BFF. It's the number one thing you can do for skin, not only because it prevents cancer, but a lot of people don't realize it's what stops premature fine lines and wrinkles in aging. It actually prevents acne from turning into acne scars. It prevents the redness from flaring up if you have rosacea. This complete step is the most important, and if you are going to skincare, this is the one you need to pay attention to. Outside of sunscreens, there are moisturizers, and at night, you just want a good moisturizer that's gonna support your skin while you sleep. Now, if your skin feels fine, you might not really need a moisturizer when you sleep. Like, your skin may be totally good. But if you like a little bit of cream on your face, or especially if you feel a little bit dry or you're overly oily, you can find a product that works for you. This is a great one from Bubble. Again, Community 66 has some oil control moisturizers. There's a really good Ceramedics one that's like nice and thick if you do have more dry skin. And a lot of K-Beauty options are really inexpensive and a good way to play around with new ingredients and see what you like. But remember, this is really basic and some people don't even need it. What you do need is a sunscreen. And sunscreens can be confusing. A lot of people are speaking about mineral versus chemical versus hybrid sunscreens. What is avobenzone? What is titanium dioxide? It sounds overwhelming, but we don't have to worry about that right now. All we have to do is get you the right sunscreen for your skin. I really love K-Beauty because it's inexpensive, and when it comes to chemical versus mineral, a lot of people are surprised by this, but I actually recommend some of the organic sunscreens, basically chemical sunscreens. And I know that sounds weird, but when you hear the word organic, in chemistry, that means based on carbon. And all sunscreens are chemical, but the chemical ones are the carbon-based. So in sunscreen, chemical equals organic. I know it sounds weird, but it also goes to show that when we label things as dirty or toxic or clean, a lot of those words really have no meaning other than marketing and brands trying to sell you things. So be very aware of that. And as you start building your skincare routine, turn and learn, watch these reaction videos and start to educate yourself about some of the tricks that the beauty industry plays on us to try to get us to feel insecure in our own skin and to try to sell us more products based on fear or insecurity. But when it comes to sunscreen, I do recommend the organic slash chemical ones. And the reason why is because these are so easy to use. They blend in flawlessly. They don't leave a white cast. They don't leave you feeling greasy or gooey. And when a lot of people are starting to build a routine, that's what they don't like about sunscreen. So if you're just starting, use a sunscreen that's going to be really good for you. Now, if somebody does have sensitive skin, if their skin is irritant prone and, you know, they get really red or itchy quickly, that's when you do want to use a physical sunscreen. Physical sunscreens are going to be much more gentle on skin, especially if you have eczema or psoriasis or your skin flares up easily. But but for most beginners who are starting to build a routine, you wanna work with the stuff that's going to be elegant and easy to use so that you can start to stick to this new routine. Again, I love some K-Beauty options. This Beauty of Josen is phenomenal. The Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel is also one of my personal favorites. You'll notice that as you try a new sunscreen, some look a little bit more mattifying. Others look a little bit more glowy or dewy. And you really won't know what you like until you try them on your face. So go to Sephora, ask for the samples, or get some of the inexpensive K-Beauty ones so that you can start to play around and see what you like. As noted, mineral sunscreens are wonderful if you do have more sensitive skin. If your skin gets really red or if things like water burn, that's when, A, you wanna see a dermatologist to make sure that your skin barrier isn't ruined. But that's when you would want to go for a mineral sunscreen. I know this one's a little bit more expensive, but this is one of the best mineral sunscreens for beginners because it doesn't like flash back or give you a white cast. This is also one that supports oceans and the brand itself is really wonderful when it comes to how they care for the environment and their customers. There's no such thing as a zero waste skincare brand. There's no such thing as being 100% eco-friendly but some brands try to do better, and this is one of them. There are also hybrid sunscreens, basically combining the physical and mineral sunscreens together. This is one of my favorites, especially if you do have a little bit more money. It's also made by a doctor, Dr. Sam Bunting, who's also here on YouTube. But all of that kind of gets into the details. You just want to remember to use a sunscreen
sunscreen that you like. And the best way to find that out is literally to go in, swatch them, try them, and put them on your face, or get them really inexpensive from like a K-beauty retailer online and see what works for you. And to make this portion a little bit easier, I've also listed some of my personal favorite inexpensive sunscreens below and which skin concern they're best for. For example, if you're worried about fine lines and wrinkles, which one is right? If you know that you're sensitive, which one is right? If you do have acne bumps, which one should you look for? Just to try to help make it a little bit easier. And bonus, if you don't like it for your face, pass it forward to a friend, put it elsewhere on your body, use it as a hand cream or a neck cream, etc. Do not let those products go to waste. And the way sunscreens work is that yes, they go on top of the skin and coat it to protect it, but they literally take the sun's rays and absorb them and destroy them so that the sun's rays don't go deep into your skin and destroy the good stuff down here. Sunscreens like give themselves up for the sake of your skin, which is why you need to reapply them. Some sunscreens reflect light, but even the ones that reflect it kind of like a mirror still do a little bit of that absorption and then kind of create that heat. But overall, these three steps or even two steps if you only want to cleanse and sunscreen are what are going to support your skin. And if you just start with these two to three things, you can start to see what your skin likes. You'll start to understand, am I more dry? Am I more oily? Then you can get into the nuance of, you know, do I live in a humid environment and am I okay to use hyaluronic acid or is my skin barrier damaged and do I need something like ceramide support? Do I have acne and want to use pimple patches or do I want to go look at retinoic acid? All of those things are what we can layer on and add on to, just the way we can add on to this cleanse consistency complete diagram. But for a beginner, the most basic thing you can do is a good cleanser and then a protector like an SPF and maybe a treatment step. And from there, you can come back here and we can start to add things on. I really hope this helps. I wish that I had somebody to guide me like this when I was struggling with my skin as a teenager. Now I did struggle with acne, but that's why I created this to help the people that I work with in clinic and hopefully to help people online who are also struggling with their skin. Do remember to stay hydrated both orally and topically. And remember, uh, our bodies are like a big human donut, which is really kind of cool when you think about it. Do you remember to reapply that sunscreen? I hope you find a good one. And always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I can't wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.